Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to Boom Chat. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Pak and Takeshi Miyazawa, the amazing team that's bringing you the princess who saved herself. Reinventing the princess myth for a new generation, telling the story of an awesome kid who lives with her pet snake and plays rock and roll all day to the huge annoyance of the classical guitarist witch who lives down the road. Hijinks, conflicts, and a fun reconciliation ensues. Based on the beloved song by internet superstar musician Jonathan Colton, the New York Times best-selling team Greg Pak and Takeshi Miyazawa are reuniting for an unforgettable adventure full of determination, bravery, and compassion for everyone. Oh my goodness, Greg, this is such a cute story. So like we know this graphic novel is inspired by Jonathan Colton's song, but what about the song made you go, I have to turn this into a story? Well, uh, Tak and Jonathan and I, uh, with, with uh, some other great creators, had done a book called Code Monkey Save World, which was based on songs, on Jonathan's song, characters from Jonathan's songs. And um, he's done all of these nerd-friendly songs with like giant squids and, uh, and creepy dolls and zombies. And, uh, and we yeah. took all these different, you know, villain characters and did a big team up thing. It was a lot of fun. Um, but there was, but he had this song, The Princess Who Saved Herself, which he wrote, he basically wrote for his daughter. And uh, and I it's it's an amazing song. It tells a little story. It's a story. I mean, Jonathan's one of these great story. Uh, he's just he's a story writer, you know, who, mm -hmm. who makes music. And um, so most of his songs have these uh, kind of great stories. And this one in particular, it just you know it it, it is its own little perfect world. And um, and you know I, we thought uh, you know is there a way to work the princess into the code monkey book? No, uh, but. We did that we did a Kickstarter for the Code Monkey book. It did so well. We we were able to do a stretch goal and a number of stretch goals, but we ended up doing the Princess Who Saved Herself children's book as a stretch goal. And um and the reason it, it made so much sense is because the song tells the story of this girl who um who sticks up for herself uh and um doesn't take, you know, I you know doesn't take any guff, but at the same time, when confronted with um conflict she finds a way to open the circle, you know? Um, she, she, uh, she gives, um, uh, she, she makes room. And, it, and, and, you know, people aren't always gonna, that, that doesn't always work, but, but she makes that gesture and, and is able to uh, not just defend herself, which she does, and stick up for herself, which she does, which is hugely important, but that she's, act, she's, she, she's, um, she's able to make room for other people and pull them in sometimes. And, uh, and, and the, the song sort of has this little cycle where this happens in a, in a couple of different ways. And it was like, they, the story's there. You know what I mean? There's a beginning, middle, and end already here. It just needs some fleshing out and all that to become a, uh, to become a children's book, but it it just felt so um, so clear already from the song. I mean, Jonathan is just a tremendous creator, and uh, so so the the raw material was all there. Um, and I was just really hungry to do a kids book. Um, I've, I've I've loved picture books all my life, and uh, and it it felt like a natural progression from doing comics. And Talk was you know obviously the right artist for it, and. Uh, so it, it was one of those, you know, the world smiled on us and and, uh, and we were able to do it. Well, Greg, thank you for leading me into my next question because I want to ask Takeshi, so how did you go about taking this adorable song and putting it onto paper and visualizing it? And, and I also want to know how much was there from the song and Greg's script versus like any elements that you may have added artistically? Um, I did listen to the song a few times, and then I read uh, Greg's scripts uh, a number of times. And the thing that stood out to me the most was just, um, you know, the theme of understanding and empathy and being, um, you know, patient. And so all those things uh, I wanted to incorporate into designs and to the world. And one of the first things that come to my mind when uh, I want some sort of safe environment uh, was always like Super Mario to me because like I was a kid and it was probably one of the first amazing experiences I've ever had playing video games and I've always you know used that as uh, my starting point for something that uh, conveys like wonder and and yeah. just uh, fun and so uh, it's not I'm not copying Super Mario <laughs> <No>. homage <laughs> that's what they say. Um, but I feel like, you know, I took that 
as the bass. And, uh, you know, Greg's always been so nice about just letting me do my thing. And I just kind of went with it. And um, luckily that, you know, he liked the designs and just, you know, it kind of went from there and it turned into this amazing book. Oh, well, it's beautiful. And your art is just gorgeous. And it's like, I want prints of like pages <laughs> just to put up on my wall because the colors are amazing. And the style is, I mean, yeah. I, I'm the one who's lucky because I get to talk to creators all the time and just gush all over them because I'm just like, you guys are awesome. This is so cool that we get to see this and put this out. Oh, my gosh. But so, that's a that's a good cue for us to plug. Uh, we should plug Jessica Colleen, who yeah, is Jessica. The, uh, the colorist. Uh, oh, and she brought yes. so much life and vigor to the whole thing and and also you know and, and we you know we we talked about it and and we wanted it i mean she she gave it a little bit of a a, a, a watercolor color feel you kind of really feel that on the edges yeah. here and there and um she did and then, and, yeah tremendous job and uh and simon boland is the letterer um who uh who did this really great thing where yeah <laughs> where he uh because it's it's not just like a regular um comic book uh it's oh. got you know it has it has a a, a, a text uh, throughout um uh, as well as but and then word balloons here and there and it's it's a it's a delicate job to balance those things and make it all feel seamless and and he did y'all are just all such a great team and it i love it when so many people get to come together and just make magic on paper for everyone to see and and devour um with their eyes is that right i don't know that's <laughs> awkward i'm sorry I, th I, think the, I think the technical term is gobble just to gobble it up with okay, your eyes okay yes <laughs> all right so greg I, my next question is for you um i noticed there were a few changes because i looked at the lyrics of the song oh, yeah. and then i obviously i read the the graphic novel and so why did you choose to make a few of the tiny little changes that you did between the song and the story like i noticed this amazing bee character that is just the sweetest. Where did she come from? <laughs> yeah, so in the song, yeah, there were, I think the biggest things we did, uh, Jonathan has a very funny interlude in the middle of the song where there's this kind of like spoken word little scene where this, you know, arrogant uh, prince tries to call up a, uh, a princess and, you know, kind of do some, you know, basically, you know, be a cocky jerk on the phone and, and she just shuts him down. And it's very funny. Um, but for this, I mean, the story for the for the picture book, like we didn't want to we didn't want to make it a romance. We didn't even want to touch on the romance, you know, mm -hmm. on any kind of romance thing. It's just this is a total kid centric uh, story. Um, uh, and uh, so so we didn't do that. And then we all and, and then also um, we wanted to have kind of like it's rule of threes. You know what I mean? Like there's sort of like a, a, a an escalating series of three things that happen in the song. There's like two things that happen. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, with the uh, uh, with the uh, the dragon and the basically the dragon and the witch. Like those are the mm -hmm. two big conflicts she has. And then there's also that interlude. I, I you know like you, you get the kind of rule of threes because you have the the spoken word interlude as well um but um but so so the b kind of fills out the story and gives us that three-step uh escalating stage of uh of things um and uh uh so but yeah so the the witch gets mad because the princess is playing this loud electric guitar so the witch is creating these uh you know she she turns a bee into a giant bee and sends it off to to get to get the princess and then the princess befriends the bee you know invites it to tea uh and um and then the witch sends the dragon and then the witch comes for herself you know i mean so those um uh or uh, you know like that that sort of like escalate well oh, no actually what does she do she sends uh she sends like she she blots out the sun is what she does at some point so but it's but but the um but yeah we needed we needed a little bit more you know an escalation of events and the bee helped to uh to create that well i love her she's adorable so speaking <laughs> Speaking of characters, Takeshi, who is your all-time favorite character from this story to design? Um, just mentioned earlier, like the queen, I think it was the funnest for me. Um, I didn't have to make her look evil, you know, and per se, like she was supposed to be sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, not a good friend, but uh, somebody who the, the princess interacts with. Mm -hmm. um, but then like, you know they're not fighting or anything they're just having an argument so i didn't have to make her look imposing in any way like so you know just thought like a hipster sort of queen with like thick from glasses and um like a cool crown and stuff would be uh, <laughs> fitting. 
you know. Yeah, I literally feel like I have that outfit in my closet. (laughs) Like I could probably pull pieces from my closet and put that together. I was like, I would wear that. That's amazing. Well done. I think we'd like to see that. You got to post that on Instagram then. That's that's like your. uh... I will make it work. (laughs) I will put that together. Uh, That's amazing. Thank you for this challenge accepted. Oh, outstanding. (laughs) All right, so Greg. Another thing that I love about this story is that it's not only about what kids can learn from adults, but it's also what adults can learn from kids. Like, can you expand on that a little bit for the viewers? Yeah, it's funny. I, you know, I hadn't actually, I hadn't actually thought of it that way, but I think you're right. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's just, um, it's kind of a classic sort of, we are all people, you know what I mean? Like, like we have to, you know, uh, uh, it's about trying to see um, whoever you're interacting with on, you know, trying to trying to share your own terms and see other people on their terms. And um, regardless of the age or regardless of, of whether they are dragons or bees or, or human. Um, uh, and uh, so that's that's kind of cool that it bridges that it bridges age as well. I had like I said, I hadn't really thought of that, but I think that's um, I think that's cool. Um, I, you know, I, I think there's uh, kids, you know, kids struggle, or kids, kids are constantly faced with authority issues. There's like all mm-hmm. kinds of people who are claiming authority over kids and they, and, um, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know, kids have um, less freedom than, <laughs> than anybody else, uh, like literally less legal freedom <laughs> than anybody else. Um, and uh, so, um Maybe it's you know maybe that's a cool thing that it's it's a it's a thing that that um, helps show model how to stick up for yourself even against a uh, an adult you know like yeah. that's uh, that's an important thing for kids to to wrap their heads around and for adults to um, to also you know to listen. Yeah, we do need to listen sometimes. Sometimes we're just like, oh, I'm the adult and you're the kid, but that doesn't. I mean, it works a lot of the time, but a lot of the times. Sometimes if you just listen to a kid, you're like, yeah, how did you simplify that so well? <laughs> um, okay, so pivoting to Keshi, I want to know, like, what's your artistic process like for this? Like, are you doing, like, uh, pen to paper sketches first? Do you work digitally? Like, how do you plot it all out? Like, what's what's your whole process like? Well, like, I'm old school, so uh, pencil and paper and ink uh, is how I draw everything. Um, I usually do like layouts for the whole story and send those to the editor, or this, uh, in this case, it was Greg. And uh, once I get approvals, then I just, I, I usually skip around. So I, I drew, I draw what I like first and then I leave the hard <laughs> stuff. But I know, I think I remember in this one, I tried to stick to it chronologically. So I tried to draw from, you know, page one, and just kind of develop and draw and kind of, I was kind of still feeling out the characters too. But I remember this one point where they, the scene where they actually kind of bond and they, uh, the queen tunes the guitar for the princess. And I, that was kind of a nice discovery for me too. So, you know, being able to share something and uh, get over your differences. And uh, so it was nice to, to just draw it in order. And then that last scene where they have yeah, band was kind of really fulfilling for me um, in this case. So, uh, you know, I've seen kids with that face. I've seen adults with that face. It's like, you you want to say something, <laughs> but you're fighting it. At the same time, you can't stop feeling it, you know, and that feeling is valid, you know? Uh, it's, it's, it's just so human. I love it. <laughs> All right, you two. I got one final question for you both. So, you originally started this project on Kickstarter over five years ago and then worked together here at Boom Studios on your hit series, Met Cadet You. What is it like for the both of you to see The Princess Who Saved Herself repackaged and re-released to a wider audience? It's awesome. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I was, I'm, I'm thrilled, you know, like I love Kickstarter so much because it lets you just get stuff done, you know, and get stuff out mm-hmm. in the world. And uh and you know you have an idea. You know if you know what it is, um, and if you can, if you you can, if you if your idea fits the scale of the audience that you can mobilize, you can 
you can just get it out there, you know, and you can do very small projects and you can do and 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 you can build up and do larger projects and all of that. But this was my first kid's book. And if I'd gone through a traditional route, it may have taken a long time to get it out there. But we had this great team. We were all ready to go and, and we were able just to do it. So love that process but, and love the process of being able to just get it directly to people who wanted it and then to take it out and sell it at, sell it at, uh, at comic cons and all that kind of stuff but um but it is a thrill to get it with a company like boom that can get it out into bookstores around the country around the world even and uh and and just put it in the hands of more kids there's nothing in the world there's there's nothing in the world like um like a kid who loves something you uh, love your work i mean i love all fans but uh, when kids, when people send me pictures of their kids reading the book or tell me that this is their kid's favorite story, that they have to read this book to their kid three times a day, that is literally the best feeling. That's like literally why we do it. So, um, you know, any opportunity to get this book out to more people. And then Boom did, you, I mean, y'all have done a tremendous job with the book and the, the like the, 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 um, y'all made a new logo and redid the cover and it's, it, it just really pops. Um, it's not just my, like I did a very bare bones, you know, like in house, like took talks gorgeous art and then just put the text over it, you know, for the princess to save yourself, like less is more, but you, you know, you did a really cool logo for it. And now it's got, you know, it's going to look great. I mean, it looks great. The dimension is the same. On it's the, six by nine. Yeah. So it's uh, like the original dimensions were comic book, you know, like comic book hardcover size. But, they, you know, so the, and, and yeah. And, and I, I think that was also a smart move because like six by nine feels like a good I mean, that's a good size for kids for a kid's comic book. Right. Or, you know, kids graphic novel. That's a yeah. standard, pretty standard size. So um, it's one of the most popular things I always sell at conventions. And uh, I can't believe the target audience actually buys the book. The yeah. little and like parents buy it for their kids and their, their friends and uh i do more conventions in tokyo uh, and it's an english book so like for the home audience um only collectors buy it but then there's bases nearby uh, for the americans so those people come and uh we've had two books now and it's amazing they come and the second time like the year after they're like is there a sequel and <laughs> <laughs> the first two and i'm like okay yeah we're working on it uh, but it'll be soon but just that feeling is amazing and so for it to come out to a publisher and for anybody to be able to get it i think yeah it's, it's very yeah, yeah i i'm very excited thing. i mean it's literally the most i mean I, I i think i it outsells when i when i take it to cons i mean back before corona when i was taking it to cons um it would outsell anything else on my table i mean it's one of those things people see it they see the title they remember the song because jonathan's song is pretty popular on children's radio and uh and, and they, it, it almost sells itself i mean it's amazing uh so it's but it's a total yeah getting it out into stores where uh you know where people can just discover it on their own and in, in bookstores and everything and comic shops are everywhere but that's nothing better than that so very well, well, this really was happy. so wonderful. This was so wonderful, you both. Um, Greg <laughs> Takeshi, thank you so much for your time today. It has been so lovely chatting with you. It has been a joy for me. And for those of you watching at home, be sure to pick up The Princess Who Saved Herself, available now wherever books are sold, and pick up Met Cadet You while you're there. <laughs>